All right, folks. So I want to go ahead and dive into these categories as we think a little bit about this speech uh, from Cl uh, President Clinton after the Oklahoma City bombing. This is a very different speech than the first one you took a look at. Unlike Madeleine Albright, who was invited to an event where she's kind of the guest of honor, this is very, very different. So we can't just put all speeches in one category, right? We tend to have speeches that there is a pre-planned event for, think Madeleine Albright. There are also times in which people need to give speeches under duress a little bit. This is one of those where there is a death, there's a disaster, there's a terrorist attack. And so that's a very different type of speech. It's a very different type of rhetorical situation. So what you choose to focus on is going to be very built around this unique rhetorical situation. So with that in mind, we are still thinking about SOAP, you. So speaker, occasion, audience, and purpose. And then based on all of those things together, that's that rhetorical context, we slide over to the you and we just kind of step back and say, okay, so what is unique about this particular speech, this particular rhetorical situation? Let's go ahead and think a little bit about it uh, for this speech. So our speaker is Bill Clinton, but we need to do more than that. We can't just stop and say, Bill Clinton's the speaker, we're off and ready to go. He is the leader of the nation in a time of struggle and of mourning. Um, so this is a leadership speech. Don't look beyond that. This is not a political thing. This is not a Democrat versus Republican thing. This is an American thing, right? So he is a leader. He is someone who is respected. He's someone that people are looking toward in a time of struggle for that leadership. That's a responsibility that's unique compared to other political speeches that he's given. This one is unique. And per usual, there's a link between speaker and audience that we wanna pay attention to. We'll get there in a moment, but we wanna think a little bit about the audience and how Bill Clinton sat down to craft this speech with a very intentional audience in mind. And of course, that audience is impacted by the occasion. So this was an act of terrorism. And so uh, while Clinton had some time to prepare the speech, it's not an event that he was necessarily prepping for, of course. Um, people are hurting and fearful. So that occasion plays a really big role here, right? The fact that we have the Oklahoma City bombing, um, and so we have the nation um, kind of rocked to its core a little bit. We're not used to domestic terrorism. And so certainly uh, that's an occasion that he is being cognizant of. So who's the audience he's thinking of? Well, let's step back for a quick second. When we looked at the Madeleine Albright speech, she had a very specific audience in mind, right? She, as the first female secretary of state, is speaking to young female college graduates about to enter the work world. She is thinking about them and really them alone. She's not worried about her speech getting put on YouTube. Didn't exist at the time. Um, and in truth, like she wasn't really thinking about that speech outside of the halls. Yes, someone was going to jot down the transcript, but that's not really her focus. She was focused on those particular graduates. Clinton doesn't have that here. He does not just have a room full of people. His audience is layered. Albright's was specific. His is layered. Two types of layers here. The primary layer is the people right there listening to him, the people of Oklahoma City, the people who are directly impacted. He certainly needs to address those individuals but he's also the president of the United States in a time of mourning, a time of attack. He knows that Americans are going to be listening in. So this is a layered audience. So primary audience, those in attendance, certainly those of Oklahoma City, but we have broader American audience here. Absolutely important. So purpose, what is it that he wants to accomplish? Yes, he wants to comfort. But there's more than that. If all he was trying to do is to comfort, you wouldn't see some of what we have in the second half of this speech where he doesn't just say, it's okay to feel this way. He actually tells us some ways that we as Americans should move forward, right? And so I think that that leads us to a little bit more specific of a purpose. So we can't just stop at comfort. In the same way we can't stop at Bill Clinton, in the same way that we can't stop at the occasion being uh, the bombing, and we need to kind of add some layers in the way that the audience, we can't stop at people of Oklahoma City, we can't stop with that purpose. He does more than that. He is making an argument about how Americans should move forward. So these are our SOAP categories. So then we have SOAP, you. We have to kind of take those and say, okay, so what makes this unique? Trying to synthesize this and say, now that we look back at this, now as we decide what are the moments that we are going to focus on, 
what is unique about this particular speech? When Bill Clinton sat down in front of a blank piece of paper to write this, and he was thinking about this occasion, this audience, what he wanted to accomplish, who he is, what did he come up with? So one, we know it's unique because the president is speaking, but it's not partisan, it's not political, it's a chance to lead. Just like any speech, we know that he wants to accomplish something. This is not going to be about policy. It's going to be about the way that he wants Americans to move forward. That's unique. Not every speech is like that. Okay, He wants a particular type of thinking to take place for Americans. That's unique. It's also unique because of that layered audience. Again, don't fall into the trap of uh, going broad and saying, the audience is everyone. That's not always true. That wasn't true for Madeleine Albright. I wouldn't even see that or I wouldn't even say that this is everyone either. He has a layered audience and he's thinking about both. He didn't just write this with Americans in mind. He thought about the primary audience for people in Oklahoma City, but he was also thinking about this secondary audience that he knew would be listening. Americans are watching, Americans are listening, Americans are united, and Americans are hurting in this. Different layers of those. He's got to be cognizant of both, but that makes it unique. So with that in mind, folks return one more time and really hyper-focus on what are the choices that he made as he sat down in front of that blank piece of paper with this unique situation in mind. Best of luck.